Hello guys, Cryptograns here. Welcome back to another Unity C Sharp Idle Game tutorial video. This is up third 32, and today we are going to be doing some critical click. So this is going to be two parts. The first part is going to be having a little animation where the if you click and you get the critical click, it will fly across screen. So I'm going to set up the animation first. The reason why I want to do this first is because if we're going to um, have a critical click, which is going to be a percent chance, I want to be able to test this um, this flying thing instead of having to click 100 times and hoping for it to happen. So that's the reason why we're going to do that. And then the second part is creating the critical click, which will be based on an upgrade. So let's get started with this. And I am pretty excited. I just discovered how to do this beforehand. So I, sh how I should be refreshed on how to do this. Anyways, we're going to be focused on our click button here today. Okay. So we are going to go to our click button. Uh, remove this. I was experimenting. And we're going to create a... Uh, okay. So we're going to create an object real quick. Okay. So just uh, go... To, you can do this wherever you want. Honestly. You, you can even do this in the canvas. So... You just do right click UI and create a text. So we have a text object here. Let's decorate this first. Let's see what we want this to look like. Okay, so I decorated my object. It looks like this so far. It's just a text. And next thing, we need to add an animator because we are going to animate this. Okay, so now once we create an animator, we are going to go to the animation tab and we're going to create a brand new animation. And it looks like we don't have an animation folder, so let's just create one. It's been called animation, and I've said that a lot in the past 30 seconds. All right, yeah, let's rename that. I don't like that. It should be animations. Okay, and we're going to call this critical click effect. Okay, keep this name. It's going to be important in the future. All right, and this should be a really easy thing to affect. Okay, so all you got to do is just click on this record button here, which is the red circle. And let's grab this right here and just let's have it um, locked in the center of the screen or wherever this thing is, this button is. And now every five, let's just gradually move it in like an explosive motion. Now you can do this whatever you want. You can make it go crazy or you can make it just go thin air and just disappear or something like that. Okay, so mine looks like this. This looks like it's too severe. I think we should flatten that. That looks a lot better. I think they should fall a little more, though. I don't like how it curves like that. I think it should just continue to, like... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Wee. I like that. Now, I want to make this fade, too. So what we can do is change the alpha temporarily. So we want the 1 to be at the start. And at the end, we want this to be 0. And now what this does is that it creates a little fading effect. Wee. Now it looks pretty. So that is how you create an animation if you've never done that before. And it's very simple, very basic. You can now you can change these to make them longer. You can shrink it. You can move these all the way you want or anywhere you want. So right now this is um 250 milliseconds. That's how long this is, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. No, this is so that right here 0 30. This is half a second and this is a a second right here. So this right here, this would be almost like around 400 milliseconds long. I don't know. I don't like their time signature thing. I think it's weird. But yeah, that's our animation. So we're going to stop. We're going to get out of that preview mode. And what we're going to do is we can name this whatever we want. We're going to call this critical click. And we can drag this into our prefabs and delete this. Actually, no, it's not delete. That's actually, no, no, no. Ignore that. Redo. Okay, I'm going to delete this prefab. So let's unpack this real quick. Unpack prefab completely. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to create a script in here real quick. We're going to call this critical click. Make sure you spell this correctly, first of all. This looks like it wasn't spelled correctly either. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to create a new script called critical click. And let it create on its own. Okay, and now let's open that up. And in here, we are going to define some properties. We can get rid of some of this stuff that we don't need. Okay, so first thing, we need a game object. Okay, and that is going to be our pop-up. And we need an animator. 
which is going to be our uh, which we're gonna call this animation okay you call this whatever you want you call this Annie if you want to mm, no okay and now we're gonna create a method in here to play this game object and to automatically destroy it after it's played okay okay so in here we're gonna call this uh, public void play now you can do whatever you want in here you can do a lot of fancy stuff in here but all I need to do is Annie dot play and remember our uh, animate animation name it's called critical click effect okay so we got critical click effect and that's all you need to put it down here for the animation and then after that we are going to destroy the game object um, and this would be game object comma and then so let's see our animation is roughly about half a second long so let's just make that 0.5 seconds. Now, if your animation is like 1.2 seconds long, I would make it around 1.2 to 1.5 seconds. Okay. And that's it. So now this game object will be destroyed shortly after, or pretty much right after this animation is done playing. Okay. We are done with our critical click class in here. And now we are going to do, we're going to create one in here. Okay. So we're going to call this public critical click because we just made an object and this is going to be called our crit okay okay so we're going to jump down to our uh, click right here because what we're going to do here we're going to create a method called public void generate crit text okay now in this method on our text right here and we will have to call this again whenever we get a crit right one thing I forgot to add is a game object because we want to assign this um, we want to make this spawn on a certain game object right so I want this to be called crit spawn, okay? So we're kind of making a fake spawn point or we're making a, we're making an actual fake fake spawn point. And this can be called our uh Okay, so we're going to create a clone because we're basically cloning this prefab. So we're going to do a var clone and we're going to set this we're going to instantiate. And let's see. What do we call this? Is it just crit? Yeah. So we put crit and then our parent object, which is going to be our spawn. And we do dot transform because instantiate is, hold on, I got to actually do this first. So instantiate is um, the original, which is our critical click right here, our game object. And then we have transform, which is our, uh, which is the parent object where we want to spawn it, where we want to create it. Because let's say we want to, because if we don't create this right here, it's going to spawn outside of your canvas at the very top right here. We don't want that. We want to spawn it where we can actually see it. Okay. And then once we are done with that, we're going to call clone.play. And the play is in critical click right here, this method. And it'll play the animation whenever you want to, but we don't want to do that. Actually, yeah, we do want to do that, <laughs> right? And then on click, we just take this generate crit text and put it in here. And now every time we click, it should spawn this text. Also, sorry if my talking sounds a little weird. I have my retainers in currently, and it's late. I should be in bed. Uh, okay, so we have our crit and our crit spawn. So we haven't made the spawn yet. And... Okay, we're having our, uh, an interview with Arn Bartz. What do you got to say? Hello. He Hello. You're currently in an interview right now. Tell me about yourself. Good interview. Good. S <laughs> okay, well, while we're playing this, I will... Okay, well, I guess I'll try to continue on the tutorial. I'll mute you. Why is the bot so... Okay, you're hilarious. Stop. <laughs> okay, well, I guess Armbarts wants me to play this during the video. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to take our prefab that we created, which is right here. We still need to drag it into the prefabs folder, so don't forget to do that. And now we can delete this critical click object. And in our game manager, 
we will drag this critical click prefab into the box. And now we need to create a spawn point. So in our, uh, where our click button is right here, we're gonna create a, another a, empty aim, blah, another empty game object right here. We're just gonna call this spawn. Now it doesn't have to be anything, obviously. We can just set to, we can have it no sight, or just be zero by zero. Just create it dead in the center right here. And all we gotta do is just drag the spawn point right here. We can also have this disabled too, so it doesn't have to interfere with anything, even though it really won't because it's zero by zero. Okay, now if you play it, it should work. Okay, so let's uh, click here and it should play. No, it doesn't, okay. We forgot something. I think I know what we forgot. It's something with the prefab. Yeah, okay, so to fix this null reference error, we gotta drag in our stuff in here. So since the game object and our animator are in the same, prefab we can just drag the prefab to both of these boxes save it and we should be good to go and let's see if it does it save yeah it does okay now it should play uh, game object with animator is inactive so let's see is it, it even it's not even spawning is this why oh yeah okay so my bad this spawn has to be enabled and another issue we're having is that the animation is looping, so we gotta go to our critical click effect and toggle off the loop time, save it, and play again, and it should work. Okay, there we go, so it plays our animation. We just gotta make the crit effect um, happen when we want it to. So now the cool thing about the cloning is that it happens, you can literally spam this button as much as you want to, and it'll keep creating these objects, right? Now what it's doing is that it's making a list right here. See all that clones on the side of the hierarchy? It's just creating a, a freaking long ass list if we keep spamming this button. If we could get an auto clicker, it'll make a giant ass list because we got lots of buttons or a lot of uh, objects being created. Look at that. <laughs> so pretty cool. This is also another way um, or another cool thing you can do and just like clicker heroes when you click on the monster it has that little um, that little damage effect too you can do something exactly like this too it doesn't have to be just for a critical click so all right we're done with part one so let's get uh, sorry with part two also before I continue I'm just gonna make this method private because we don't really need to access this anywhere else okay so let's hop into our upgrade screen and for once we're actually creating a new upgrade which we never do and since we can quite we have quite a bit going on here. I should probably make a panel. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create a, I'm going to create a, I think it's a scroll rect. Where is the scroll rect? It's scroll view right here. Okay. And I'm just going to scale this to where we don't need to include our bimax into here. We can just scale it up to here. I feel like this is not right. Okay. I see why our upgrade screen is in a small box. So I'm going to expand that real quick by taking everything out of it and setting the anchor to stretch and all the dimensions are set to zero. And bring everything back in. And now we can be able to snap our scroll view to the sides. And we don't need these scroll bars. I personally think they're not really useful because uh, on a mobile device especially, you don't really need to hold down on a scroll bar. You can just slide. Also, to adjust our viewport, we can just turn off scroll rect because this is being really annoying. And just adjust that to whatever size you like. And I don't really like this image. So in order to have this, you can just create none. Let's see. Set the opacity to 0 0.001 in order to have this mask to work. And this mask, again, will make sure you can't see any object outside of this scroll view. And I can just call this a list. And this will be our viewport. Yep. And it's got a mask in here. I don't need it. And we can get rid of this image too. Because, uh, yeah, our content is right here already. Okay. I see what it's doing. Okay. So I'm going to delete viewport. And I'm going to replace this viewport port right here to content or no content is right here and the viewport is list all right there you go i i despise how they set this up it's very complicated and it can be simplified with just a few adjustments 
And now in here, uh, our content can be whatever size that they want. So let's put our click upgrade one game object in here. And now if we drag it out, we should not be able to see it outside of this canvas. Pretty cool. So let's drag the rest in. We only have these, yeah, we can keep the buy modes out of it. So we have our four upgrades. And now it should scroll accordingly. So let's create a new, I'm going to, uh, let's copy click upgrade one. And it'll be down here. And also another way to kind of hide this mask, you can also just turn this off and then you can see it. Or you can just drag the content outside of the list. That works too. I personally drag the content out of it even though you can just click this button and it works the exact same. Okay, so this is gonna be called critical click. Okay, and inside here we have our max, our actual upgrade and the progress bar. So I'm just gonna rename everything. And I could make I could make a prefab out of this too, because it's the same upgrade. and it's, I already have a Mars upgrade, right? Yeah, never mind. It's a little simplified. Okay, so this is what mine looks like. I have max, which is the buy max button, upgrade, and bar. So in uh, the upgrade, this is just me called critical critical chance. Uh, 100 times critical chance, because that's what it's going to be. It's going to be 100 times your current click value. And the power is going to be plus 0. Point, it's just going to be plus 0.1%. Okay. And we can also add a limit to this upgrade so it doesn't go beyond 100%. And yeah, that's all we need here. The nice thing about what we did in our upgrade manager, if you've been following the tutorial series along, is that we can add on to this array right here. So I have click upgrade text. Uh, let's see. Now, what would this be considered? This, okay. So we have click upgrade production. This can be its own thing because I only, I'm only gonna have one of these, right? <clears throat> so I'm not gonna add on to this click upgrade text. I'm just gonna create a new separate text and yeah. And I should have made this by max I should have made a single array for that, but I, I really didn't think about that because it's the exact same Bimax. So let's just create a critical chance. Uh, text. <clears throat> and I'll also create a Bimax chance for this too. Do I already have a text? Okay, I was like, why is it? like that and I do have a progress bar so I should make an array for this okay I can I, I can do that so let's just replace these uh, I'm just gonna call this upgrade bar and then upgrade bar smooth and this is gonna be a size 2 image array and you can expand this inside Unity if you want to create more. If you want to do this for all of your upgrades, now that's up to you. Just change this to whatever size. And in Unity, you're going to have to adjust that size because changing this number here isn't going to do anything here. So make sure you change it here and in Unity and in the expector. Because Unity is big dumb and doesn't do that automatically on, except for on compile. And okay, so now we just got to add indexes to our progress bars here, just like that, since it's now an array. And oh, cool. So now we got to do the same thing for our uh, our cost. Okay, so what's our cost going to be? We have quite a bit of stuff here. Uh, it, this is starting to look kind of a mess. I kind of wish I just had all this thing, had all this stuff into one singular array and that's okay so now this doesn't need to be an array 
Now, I really don't feel like redoing the entire system. That's why I'm copying and pasting this. If you understand how arrays work, then I'd highly suggest you just to do one array for costs, for all the costs, powers, base costs, all that stuff. And you may not need an array for all upgrades, obviously. Like the crit chance, we don't need one for power. I mean, it's consistent the entire time. Unless you have different types of critical chance upgrades. That Again, that's just how you however you want to do it so this can be called a uh, crit cost uh, I don't think we need a power yeah because <clears throat> we only have one upgrade we have a crit base cost which we don't need as well we don't need cost molt as well we don't need unlock costs what even is that uh, uh, don't need that Click upgrade levels. Uh, we need that. We need crit levels. And honestly, we can bring these to our player data class. So let's see. Where's our upgrades? Right here. Yeah, we can bring these here. And our costs actually, just only our critical levels needs to be in here. So let's bring this cost back here. And we're going to set it equal to, um, I want this to be 1e3 times big double pow. I want this to scale moderately. So maybe make it two times. It's uh, data dot level. Data. Where's data? Oh, this is. Oh, this is upgrade manager. So it's game dot data dot crit levels. Cool. So now it will double every upgrade, starting at one e three. Um, I don't think we need to do anything else in here, except we need to let's go to our upgrades. We need to set this to zero. Okay. All right. Now again, I hate to make another method, but <laughs> I really don't like doing this. I kind of wish I just did this merge this all in one. Okay. Now, if you're watching this video, I again, I'd highly advise you to merge this all into one method, not create numerous ones like I am. Because what I can do is just create like add these to an object right here. Right, and yeah, you can just like switch case it or something like that. Like if it's, yeah. Uh, okay, we're just gonna do a buy crit. Okay. Uh, let's just do var data equals game dot data just to make our life a little easier. And it's the exact same thing right here. And we don't need any index here, cause we don't have an array. So we have our crit costs and our levels will be data dot crit levels plus plus and data coins minus equals crit cost. Okay, and that is that is pretty much it. Oh, we do actually need some stuff. Um actually do we no. We we only we don't need that. Okay. Okay. So now we have our buy crit, we need our buy max crit. Okay, now I, I would while loop this, but that's pretty cheap. So what we can do is calculate by count and just do exactly this right here. Copy this. <laughs> we can actually, what we can do is use our methods by max. Let's do that. We already have it. Why well, have to make something else? Okay, so now in here, we are just going to call methods dot by max now how do we actually use this let's see let's find this okay yeah we use it like this so let's copy this and we can just replace whatever you want here and we will replace our fields our parameters so this is our base cost our base cost is 23 our cost molt is 2 and our levels are 
game dot data dot now we can simplify this to var data equals game dot data so we can do data dot coins and data dot crit levels instead now it'll buy max and we need to add our non array manager at the end for our saves and actually we can we can get rid of this because we don't have any arrays in here so okay let's invert this array to make it a little cleaner and we have our bimax. So cool, we're starting to adapt to our new system. I think that's good. Instead of creating a brand new method every time, I definitely think that's the way to go. We can obviously do the same thing for these, but if you want to replace them, here you go. Use this right here. And, okay. We need to have our... Okay, so we haven't had our cost done yet so let's see what do we do this okay we're gonna set this equal to whatever our UI is here okay so I'm gonna kind of copy it or copy everything down real quick okay I copied everything down so it's critical chance text dot text is equal to dollar sign 100x critical chance new line cost colon uh, let's space that and we use uh, methods dot notation method. We have our critical cost and F2 for our two decimals. Coins, new line, power plus 0.1% new line levels and our crit levels. Cool. So we got that done. We need our by max. Okay. So let's calculate that. Now, what we can do here is we have our calculate by count, right? So let's just copy this format right here. And let's see, where is it? Right here. Okay, we're going to do dollar sign Vimax parentheses. And we're going to put our curly braces in here. And we now need to replace these variables. So our cost, crit cost. Our base is 1E3. Our multiplier is. What is our mult? It is just two. And our levels is data.crit levels. Cool. That is our by max text. And that is it. Pretty easy. Now we need to actually make this uh, critical chance work. Okay. So what we're going to do inside the click is we're going to create uh, a random number. Okay. Also, we can cap this at. So what we're going to do is, okay, what we're going to do is add an if statement if uh, data.crit levels is greater than or equal to 100, or we can just say, yeah, greater than or equal to 100, because actually, no, it's 1,000, then we're going to return it. We don't want to do anything here. Same thing in our bimax, okay? If it's anything greater or equal then we can just uh, fix that and now in our by max we kind of have to control how this works okay and also our sadly our by mode do, does not um, count in here yet so actually what I'm gonna do is take this here uh, this actually might be an issue I could see why I had I struggled with this. Okay. I'm just going to Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so I see the reason why I did this. It's cuz this is static. And our by max count is not static. And that's an issue. Okay, well, I'm just going to, now I'm just going to create this calculate by max two and just return this right here. Okay, now. 
it's because this has it doesn't implement this system yet, the OCD by. So I'm just going to replace this with calculate by count two, and that should solve our problem. And in here, the reason why this is a little kind of annoying to do right now is because this bimax is global for everything, right? But we want to set a limit to this. So I would have to create like a separate, um, okay, I know what we can do. We're going to create another bimax here. And we're going to call this bimax limit. So we're going to have a, a, an int limit right here. Okay. So let's say if n plus k is greater than limit, then we're going to... Okay, so how we're, let's open up a note document to do this math. So let's say our level right now is 900. Okay. And we can buy 200 more. And we want to say our limit is 1,000, right? Our total levels after that is going to be 1,100. And that's an issue. So what we're going to do is subtract. And we're going to do uh, a thing called math.min. So what we can do is find the minimum between these two. And obviously we want to use our min as our example. Actually, no, no, no. All we need to do is, okay, we, I, I kind of made this mistake in my last video, is not doing the math. We're doing less math. This time it's more math than usual, more than I'm supposed to. I just need to subtract these two together in order to get 100, because I only need to buy 100, okay? So then I set n to 100, okay? So now all I got to do is set n equal to n plus k. Mm, no, no, that's why. It's n minus k. So this will simplify to n minus equals k. All right, so now we have our bimax limit, so we don't have to worry about it going outside of the limit. And now we got to replace this method with bimax limit and add our upgrade limit to 1,000. And there we go. That should work like a beauty. And now, uh, why is this? Hmm, interesting. Uh, I, okay, our critical chance. So we need to create a random number in order to do this every time. So let's find our click. Okay. Way too long. I still need to edit this damn piece of shit. Okay, so now what we're gonna do here is we're going to create a um we're gonna create a random number generator. So we're gonna do a var um crit. Okay, so let's only do this if the the level for critical chance is greater than zero. Otherwise, we're kind of just doing some pointless calculations. Okay, so var crit is going to be equal to new system dot random. Now it has to be system dot random because Unity Engine also has it as well. So even though you have system implemented, you can't just do random because it's going to create an amb ambiguous reference. Okay. And it's going to be confused between Unity Engine and System. So make sure you do System dot. And it's pretty easy. Unlike uh, Java. Java's random is awful. I hate Java with a passion when it comes to that. It overcomplicates it. And now all we got to do is just pick some random numbers. Okay. So I think we should just do, okay, so these are integers. So we got to pick either between 1 and 100. 
And now, how are we going to reduce this chance? So since, um, okay. So since this is an integer, I want this to be a float. So how we're going to make this into a float is that it's going to create a number between 1 and 100. So... Okay, so let's do 1 to 1,000, and what, it, what we're going to do here is subtract it by our data.crit levels, and we're going to divide this by 10. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because it's, uh, um, wait, hold on. Yeah, I think this works, and we don't need to divide anything here. We just need it subtracted by critical levels, okay? Because once this is a thousand, it's gonna create a random number between one and one. So that's a hundred percent chance, right? So we are creating a random number between one to one thousand minus the level. And every level subtracts this by one, which is zero point zero. Or just is it are we doing zero point zero zero? I think we are. If it is, then it's ten thousand levels. If it's not okay, where is our upgrade? Right here. Yeah, 0.1%. Okay, cool. So we only need to do this 1,000. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do is... So this may seem really difficult to occur, but we're going to check for this. So crit, uh, this can actually be a var. So we're going to check if crit is greater... Um, no, okay. I think I'm just confusing myself. Okay. We're going to get rid of this minus. So it's going to create this 1 to 1,000 automatically. Okay. So if crit is greater or equal than, uh, yeah. So let's say if it's 500 and our chance is 500. Okay. We're going to do if crit is greater or equal than 1,000 minus crit. Okay. So let's say this is level 1. So it's 999. If it lands on 1,000, then yes, it's considered a critical hit. Okay. If it's landed at 1,000, so we actually might need to increase this to 999. Okay. Uh... Yeah, that actually, we're going to make this greater then, okay? Because if this is a, this is a 1, so it's 999, we don't want it to land on 999, and because that will give us a 0.2% chance of 0 0.1 at start for our first level, okay? So if crit is greater than 1,000 minus crit, that should work, okay? If that's true, we're going to generate this crit chance, and we are going to also add uh, our total click value times 100, okay? And we're going to just make things look a little cleaner. What is wrong with this? Oh, okay. Crit num. Sure. We'll just re rename this. Okay. Oh, this would also be data dot crit levels. My apologies. And we'll just change that too. Okay, let's save it and we should be good to go. Okay, we gotta go to our game manager first. Let's see, do we have anything here? Actually no we don't. It's our upgrade manager. Upgrades manager. And in here, we have our new progress bars. So don't forget, we got to replace our original one. Well, I, I do at least. So this is our, our bar. Right, I have this. And our, our smooth. And this is the bar right here, okay? Uh, okay, here's our new text right here. So this would be our by max text would be the second one and our upgrade text would be that one. And now we need to sign our buttons here. So it would be upgrade manager by um, 
just buy crit, and this one will be buy crit max. We should be good to go. Oh, one thing I forgot to do is to toggle off this, um, this mask. Okay, so let's save it. Okay, so we should not be seeing this pop up every time. Cool. So we can buy some of this. Okay. So also now we forgot to do another thing is that we can just we can just drag this wherever you want. We want to turn this to vertical only by toggling off the horizontal. So now we can only scroll up and down. And we can see our upgrade. Cool. So let's buy some of this. Uh let's give us some money. So this is a level 10. We have a 1% chance of this actually happening. So should we try it? Oh, we got it. <laughs> so right now we're only getting one per click. So let's upgrade this. Our upgrade, our buy max seems awfully off now. I don't know why. Okay, well, that's fine. I can just do this. Come on, let's get this critical chance. So this should be giving us, so 121, it should be giving us about 1e5. Oh, no, 1e4. Did they even give it to us? So this is pretty rare. So let's give us a, a lot of money. How about that? We can buy max this. Okay, so now our level is uh, 156. That's a 15.6% chance of it happening. There you go. That's a lot more. So let's set this to zero. Let's watch this happen. So it's not giving us. So it's not giving us any more. Why is this? So it's playing this right here, but it's. Oh, I see. Because we're adding it to the coins collected. Okay, I see now. So let's just add this here. Multiply by 100, and we should be getting our critical click. All right. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and turn on those notifications. Comment your suggestions down below, and check out my videos in the top right corner. Thank you for watching, and have a good one. Peace.